All right, so on section A4, which starts on page 436. So from page 436, what this section is going to be doing is you're going to be finding the sums of infinite geometric series. Infinite means what? Never ends. All right. What's geometric mean? It multiplies or divides by the same number every time. Right. So, Okay, so here's what you're going to see is you're going to see problems like this, and it's going to ask you to find the sum or the partial sums. Okay, what partial sums means is that you're going to add a specific number of terms together. You've already done that. Okay, that formula that I gave you that I erased off the board from yesterday, that geometric uh, series formula, the A1 parentheses, 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R, that is the partial sums formula for geometric series. That's not anything new. So if I asked you to find the sum of the first four terms, you could actually do that by just putting it in that equation or adding the first four together and so on. Okay? What you're going to hopefully notice is when you, the more terms that you sum, on certain ones that are geometric, they will converge to a certain number. Okay? Now, when you're looking at ones that have a number higher than, when Taylor said that we're going to multiply or divide by the same number every time, when we multiply by numbers that are bigger than one, and I know Bryce kind of gave me a weird look when we were talking about that when it comes to adding ones that never end, those numbers are going to get rather large. So when your ratio is above 1, you cannot add the infinite geometric series because of the fact that they never stop, and they'll just continue to grow. So ones like the one I have on the screen are ones that you can do okay? when the ratio is less than 1. That's the trick. So when you have a ratio less than 1, and what they have is they have R, and what do those symbols mean again? Right. When the ratio itself, or the absolute value of the ratio, is less than 1, then this is the formula you're going to use. It's a really simple formula. S sub n equals A1 divided by 1 minus R. Not nearly as complicated as the last partial sums theorem, or last partial sums formula. All we need to know is the first term, and we need to know the ratio. Okay? Is it S, N? S, because this doesn't ever stop, Taylor. These are going on forever. Okay? But, just so that you guys know, if the absolute value is greater than or equal to 1, it's not going to have one. Okay? So if your ratio is greater than or equal to 1, it's not going to have it because as we just talked about, it'll continue to grow to the point where we're never going to be able to add them all together because it's going on forever. What's going to happen with our other formula, though, as our ratio is less than 1, then when we plug it in there, it's going to converge at a certain number. Okay? So here's what, if we do the one that's on the screen, 1 half... 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth. First of all, what's the ratio? What are they multiplying by to get the next number? 1 half. Okay? If you forgot how to do it, you could take 1 fourth divided by 1 half. And as long as that number comes out to be less than 1, you can put it in the formula. If it's above 1, you can't. Okay, so then in the formula, the way it works, what's the first term? A half divided by 1 minus a half. 
When you type this in said calculator, be very careful. Some of you are typing it in wrong where you're taking 1 half divided by 1 minus a half. The bottom needs to be in parentheses if you want to just type the entire thing in at one shot. Or you could take 1 minus a half on your own first, which is a half. And what's a half divided by a half? 1. Yeah, it got a little. Do you want me to draw it? Connect? No. <laughs> That's an infinity sign. It got a little. Oh, stop. Okay, fine. Because <laughs> you guys are making fun of me. All right, so here's this type of equation. First of all, what's the ratio? What's the ratio? We just took a test on this. Kind of disappointed. No one's telling me the answer. It's pretty easy. 0.7. Good job. OK? The fact that this is in the generic equation of A1R to the N minus 1. OK? So the ratio is 0.7. So first of all, can you even do this problem? Yes, you can, because 0.7 is less than 1. <coughs> So, what's the first term? One. No, three. Three. Because again, it's in that equation. So, three goes on the top, one minus 0.7 goes on the bottom. What is three divided by one minus 0.7? Or three divided by 0.3? Or 30 divided by 3? 10. Yes. If you type it in your calculator, you should have gotten 10. First of all, what's the ratio? Three. Is three less than one? No. So what's the sum? There is none. Why? Because the ratio is bigger than one. That's what I am put on this slide right here. I don't know if you guys were paying attention. Where it says the absolute value, if it's greater than or equal to one, there is none. OK? All right, what's the ratio? OK, now here's how you do this again. When you're finding the ratio, if I give you a pattern like this, a1 is this one, A2 is the second one. To find the ratio, you take A2 divided by A1. Or in this particular example, negative 3 fourths divided by 1 is negative 3 fourths. So, is the absolute value of negative 3 fourths less than 1? Yes. So therefore, we can put it in the formula and see what we get. So, 
What's the first number? One. one. Good. Over one minus negative three fourths. Again, as Allie asked, can you just type this in your calculator? Uh huh. And Tamara got four sevenths. Does anybody else get that? Yeah? Okay, so it must be right. Now, again, here's how it would have happened. You would have had 1 over 1 plus 3 fourths, which is 1 over 1 and 3 fourths. Bless you. Well, yeah, either way. Let's go with it. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> Or it's 1 over 7 fourths, then you multiply it by the reciprocal to get 4 sevenths. Because the first one, I did. I just didn't actually get the answer. What do you think? What's the ratio? Five fourths. Is five fourths less than one? No. So what's the answer? None. No. No solution. Can't happen. Anything like that. Okay? What do you think? That's half of it today. Okay? Now, the next half. Looks like this. 0 0.2424242424. Da, 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 da. What's the pattern? Good. You guys know these as repeating decimals, yeah? Yeah. Okay, now, what your job is for this problem is you're going to have to take the repeating decimal and convert it into a fraction. That's your goal. So, here's how I do this. I'm going to use the formula like that. Okay? Now, what I need to know first of all is what parts repeat. Two and four, right? That's it. Those are the repeating parts, yeah? Okay. Point two four is your top number or the A1 because that's the repeating part. 1 minus, and as far as the ratio goes, what decimal place does it go to? The hundredth, okay? Because two decimal places is a hundredth. One decimal place is a tenth, yep. and so on. What's a hundredth as a decimal? Point oh one. Move it over two places. Done. One. One, two. Now, as far as the rest of the problem goes, 1 minus 0 0.01 is 0.99. Can you have decimals inside of fractions? No. So how many times you got to move it over? Two. Good. So my final answer should be 24 over 99. Yeah. Done.
How many decimal parts repeat? Twenty-four over ninety-nine. Oh shoot, I didn't. Yeah, you're right. What's twenty-four over ninety-nine reduced to? Eight thirty-three. I'm sorry. Anyway, how many parts repeat? No. Thank you, Kylie. One. Only the 5 repeats itself. So 0.5. 1 minus. How many decimal places is that? 1, which means a tenth. What's a tenth as a decimal? Good. What's 1 minus a tenth? I don't know. I was going to say the wrong answer. 0.9. 1 minus 0.1 should be 0.9. Can you have decimals inside of fractions? No. no. <laughs> That's it. This is what you're doing. Never.